be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. So first on our agenda tonight is a, um, uh, a covenant release and um, for the property at 15 Corporate Park Drive, Assessor's Map F14, Lot 40, um, Corporate Park Extension Subdivision had a covenant, which is in our packets tonight. And it had to do with the um, development of the Corporate Park Drive Extension, which has remained a private way. And they're asking to release the covenant extension with respect to the lot um, for 15 Corporate Park Drive. Mike? Yes. You um, want to ex give a little background yes, on that? Yes, please. Um, Brian Murphy, uh, representing uh, ownership of uh, Corporate Park um, in general. Um, we are in the process of, of working on our closing for Brigham and Women. Um, as part of that, there's some title things that need to be taken care of. One of them is this, uh, this covenant, um, which is tied to the extension um, that was filed or approved in uh, 1996, it appears, um, and recorded. Uh, so uh, it's just kind of a dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I have to get, get this um, release and also I have to close out an old um, uh, notice of intent. Um, so so we're, we're releasing the covenant just with respect to that lot? Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, um, my understanding that is what, um, what the covenant uh, release would be for. Okay. And I think, sorry. Do we have a covenant Jim release Trump. that we could sign, or is it? We have to just vote it. Oh, you have it yeah, there. Yeah. You have a, can it's, I see the covenant that, release? This is something that, that uh, Matthew provided to me. And, uh, I provided him the form, and then he filled it in. And I think it would be for the, what's marked as lot 5D on these drawings, um, which is actually sort of, because it's referencing back to the old so division drawings, I guess, it's sort of, it's the whole massive lot that extent, like the whole big parcel that sort of snakes. It's not just the, the little, you know, the, the parcel that the no, building's going to go on yeah. that you did with the form A, but I guess it would apply to the, the big, I assume anyway. Wait know. a minute, why would the, the covenant release would apply to the whole park or just to the form A lot? I assume it would apply to the whole thing because it's referencing back to the original subdivision drawings, I would think. Yeah, but this says but that can we can release it as to a particular lot on the plan. And this is the plan, or at least I would just think well, this is the Well, you're asking for the one lot to be released. Yes, I am. So um, it would be this big lot 5D, I assume. Oh, no. It should actually, it shouldn't be with respect to this plan. It should be with regard to the Form A plan and the lot on the Form A. Because the covenants to maintain the road, I think, mm -hmm. still stay with the rest of the corporate park, right? And I would think that up and if they, if you, if you lease this as opposed to selling it, they may want you to honor those covenants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas these people are satisfied that whatever you've done on there, that's all you're going to. They're not looking for additional promises from you, right? And they just want the covenant released because it otherwise runs with their land, right? And they don't want to have to come in and fix corporate park drive for this person. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the the complication, I guess, around it is in just uh, referencing a, a plan that has a lot that doesn't have, you know, specifically that lot on it. Right. right so, um, why don't we just reference the form A? Yeah, I mean, I've got the form A. Too. Yeah, I think so. The understanding being a majority of the planning board. Hereby sort of in that the covenant dated this and recorded at this book and page is released as to the following enumerated lots shown on plan <coughs> entitled so so it should be released as to the lot shown on the new plan. Um, the form A plan. Okay, right? I, I so, guess um, well there's wording in here. Um, here. It's shown as assessor's map. 
F14 lot 40 for site plan approval. So in everything that we've had so far, it's been referred to as map. I think that's a different project. Well, that's the assessor's map, but would that make more sense to reference that? Um, no, no, it should reference a book and page if it's going to get <coughs> well, filed in the registry. Shouldn't it? What are you looking at? I'm looking at our approval. Linda Anderson, Alder Company, here in Netflix. I believe it's not shown yet on the assessor's maps in any case. Is this is this the lot we're talking about? Yeah, so this is the 4 May. Yes, yeah, so, so Section 3 should still remain operative, that you're going to construct ways and install municipal services to serve any lot uh, before such lot may be built upon or conveyed, provided that a mortgagee who requires services. Unless we rep that, unless we reference the address, the 15 Corporate Park Drive. No, no, no. We we have that. Wasn't that form A filed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and record. Okay. We should All have right. a book and page for that form A. Okay. I assume that's already been done, right? Yes. Well, can we just refer to lot lot 50 one on the plan by Mackenzie Engineering, dated. And signed by the planning board. Where's the? Um, I need that back. No. Yes, ma'am. Um, um, no, it's looking for a plan book and page which I don't have for the Form A without getting on the computer. Um, I could try to find it on the registry's website. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Actually, Matt, are you, are you good at finding stuff on there? I might. Uh, or I should might I run over? It. It, should. it can't be the lot that's on that plan would be lots that aren't yet being conveyed or built upon. Right. Because lot five has, lot five is a huge lot that's still available to be developed, right? The rest of lot five. Uh, yeah, 5D, yes. Um, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with just releasing. If we, if if the board's comfortable with just releasing it as 5D1, that's fine. Um, yeah, but we can't sign this tonight without. Um, without publication. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah. looking that up right now to see if I can find it. Uh, is it All right, does anybody have any issues with that? Mm -mm. No, is it no. crucial that you have it right now? Or can you wait a week or so? Um, well, if we if we find it, everything and we get it before the end of tonight, we can, yeah. we can um, sign it tonight. Yeah, okay. And he can pick it up tomorrow if he needs to pick it up tomorrow. Yeah. Why don't we move? Wait, Tyler's bill on Woodstown is pretty high. On which one? Woodstown. Yeah. I was surprised at the amount of that. Weren't you? Maybe not. Yeah, we have to go to the Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know. How many hours was it? It's been a long time, huh? Was it 15 hours or more? Uh, hours. Is the rate about the, the same? I'd have to add them up. What's the total bill? Thirty-seven seventy-five. So if it's thirty-seven seventy-five, that's thirty-seven point seven five hours. Oh. Okay, so we spent uh, a little over a week. The week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have it um, <coughs> on my. That was an easy site. <laughs> Damn. Do you think maybe it hasn't been? Oh no, it ha I did it myself. It's definitely been yeah, okay. I did it myself. So. Um, Would they have it next to a Brian in the town clerk's office? No, I, I um, at some point I might have emailed it here, just the yeah, uh, email the, the proof of recording. And <clears throat> I know I sent it to the to the buyer, so that's where I'm looking at my old sent email to okay. see if I got that. Uh, um. Um, so meanwhile, when are, while they're looking for that, Matthew, you're looking online, right? Yeah, but do I'm you want me to it. take a look? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe try to grab Kathy Simon if she's free because she knows how to. She's the expert. I know how to search. Okay. <laughs> I do do title work. It's shown me before, but I'm not. Remember, no, no, no. I, Kind of a working session. <laughs> kind of a working session. There you go. Yeah, we've had the we've had the dog for roughly I think nine days now. And she is one hell. She weighs three pounds and she doesn't stop. And last night was the first night she slept through. Which was wonderful. That was a lot of work. <laughs> no, I can't have my kid. <laughs> we get black labs. I think they're worse than any kids. I don't know. You want to see this one? <laughs> yeah. And this one's only this big. Yeah. <clears throat> you better, you better get in charge of that dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> or else you're gonna regret it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm taking. I'm, I'm going with the training. And I gotta wait till she thinks that she's gonna be 12 weeks old before uh -huh. I get be trained. The dog Not very sent to on to training. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you're not the boss, they become the boss mm -hmm. real quick. What okay. kind of dog? Golden Doodle. We, we had an 80 pound, four, she was 14 years old when she passed away. Uh -huh. So because we're old now, we decided to get a mini Golden Doodle. This one is three quarters poodle and one quarter retriever. And I think she's got more poodle in her, obviously, yeah. than anything else. Poodles can be she, tough. Whoa, man. Smart. They like to be alpha. Yeah, exactly. And this is a female. And she's the retrievers. Female. Retrievers, they'll, they'll roll right over. Yeah, well, that's, well, that's what. That's what. My, that's what my retrievers love to be told what to do. Yeah. <laughs> my my own goal is to do Poodles, not so much. No, you don't get it. <laughs> okay, boss. So, could somebody uh, move that we? Approve You're the covenant release with respect to lot D five, lot five D dash one, um, as shown on the plan entitled Plan of Land Assessor's Parcel F fourteen dash forty, fifteen Corporate Park Drive, in Pembroke, Mass. Recorded with said deeds as plan number. Eighteen dash 
163, reported in Plan Book 62, page 142, and releasing said lot from the restrictions as to the conveyance and building specified thereon. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, so if we could just redo this to say, um, could just modify this okay. then we can sign it tonight and give it to you. Perfect. All right? Thank you. All Should right. I just come back tomorrow then Matthew or um, to probably as if I just do it right now I guess. I All right I'm we can keep talking about other minutes. stuff. Yeah. All right. sit here. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. All right um, so Dominic's way is not back on our discussion tonight but we do have a, um, a written request to extend the subdivision um, we have a request for a 60-day extension for the subdivision application review for subdivision number 1801 titled Dominic's Way and located at 56 Gorham Avenue in Pembroke. This would change the deadline from June 6, 2018 to August 5, 2018. Do we have anyone to make such a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we grant the 60-day extension uh, for subdivision application review for subdivision number 1801 titled Dominic's Way and located at 56 Gorham Avenue. Uh, Change the deadline from June 6, 2018 to August 5, 2018. Do we have second. a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, great. Check. We're moving right along. <coughs> uh, no, so we, we have 10 more minutes before our vote on Irving Oil. Do you, Matthew, do we know if anybody's coming in for that tonight? Well, it's uh, just to review I don't know. the conditions. I think Maybe one or two people are not. I think Bob Gavin can't because it's Marsh Good. We just saw the conditions. Yeah, I, mean, they, I don't think they need to. Okay. Um, um, my impression from talking But we Bob have Gavin some other. Yeah, if you want to do admin admin matters, sure. yeah. Okay. Um, we've also been told we have an um, uh, email from our town council advising us that we don't have to read the conditions out loud as long as we're looking at them and we all agree <laughs> on what they are. Yeah, and so that email is in your folder, is and that's sort of my, okay. how I that's would interpret it. It's a little more nuanced than that, but that's how I would interpret it. So. Um, uh, we need to sign the final drawings from Brigham and Women's Medical build, Building. Does the board wish to sign a new title sheet or an original set of drawings? Um, let's wait on that until Matthew's done with this. Um, just a reminder that on June 4th, we're hearing the Dominic's Way subdivision plan and to maintain a quorum from our previous hearings for that project, we once again need all four of Dan Taylor, Tom Irving, Andy Wendell, and myself. June 4th. Ooh. Do we need to move it? We need to move it. Okay. And then the other option, I guess, would be to do the certificate of compliance then, I guess. Uh, you remember that? Yeah, but what if I Andy gets hit by a bus and misses solution. another one? <laughs> <laughs> Is your name Sharon? <laughs> no, it's my wife now. <laughs> you mean if I win the lottery? If he wins the lottery and goes and, to Monte Carlo. Yeah, and decide just to skip town because I won the lottery. <laughs> That's a much better. <laughs> That's not the one we use, though. Um, yeah, I'll be, I'll, I won't be here on the 4th. Okay. Um, all right, let's hold off on that then. Uh, we've been, an employee at the Registry of Deeds mentioned the option of waiting to do our reorganization until we have a new interim member taking Brian Van Riper's seat so that we don't have to submit 
signatures twice. to the registry twice because yeah. each time we submit okay. to the registry we have to pay something to file them makes sense okay. um so we can That's hold off on that if everyone's comfortable yeah but yep. then the question is um uh, matthew talked to sabrina about replacing brian and the ideal procedure would be to propose pro post notification about the opening on the town website for a week and then have a discussion on an agenda item and then we the board yeah. would vote to recommend someone yeah. to the board of selectmen and hold a here hold a joint right so yeah that's fine all right so did paul say <laughs> he he doesn't have a problem staying on for another year I didn't reach out to him this week. No, okay. We should probably talk with him because. Um, I think we still have to post it. Oh, no, we do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, do what yeah. we're supposed okay. to do. Right? Yeah, I, I, a week is good, yeah. and I think we should also think about possible candidates on our own, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. But it's good to have the, the process be open and transparent, so. Right. Okay. All right. So <coughs> we are going to ask. Uh, Sabrina and or Matthew to post notification on the town's website that we are seeking to fill an open position on the planning board yeah. how, how and it would be subject to a joint appointment yeah. between the planning board yeah. and the board of selectmen. How long was Brian's term? Until 2020. 2020. So this would so be, be two years. No, the assignment would be until uh, the election next year okay and then, then, then that, that person, person could choose to run for the last for the year. remainder of the okay. term or they could choose not to and we'd have an open seat or they could choose to um run against whoever's up next year i don't even know if it's me maybe well we want to fill we want all the seats filled yeah but you don't yeah, right. you don't want <laughs> so a certain seat you just run you just run for an yeah, open you seat. have to, you have to run for a five-year term or a one-year term next year oh that's, that's correct you're right because it'll be a five-year term and a one-year term open you're absolutely right so whoever runs next year yeah. would have to then decide which they're running for hey, matthew right? when am i up um he's uh, in the middle of drafting his form you, you you're a while you i don't like think so don't you have three years Two years yeah, you know, no, I think you just you just re ups. You're with yeah. me. You, you're you're okay. with me. So we're twenty two. Yeah, you're both. You guys are both twenty twenty two. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, so Brian. I think I'm twenty one. I don't know when Brian's term was. Twenty. Happen. I think I you should just Brian. be a lifer, Tom. Yeah, unfortunately, I can be though, can I? Yeah, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I could too. <laughs> We, could, we, could we don't want you to do that. <laughs> so we have a um, letter in our folders with respect to um, um, the bridges at Pembroke yeah. and the detention yeah, I, I basin. Saw yeah. I saw the letter. Is that the one, is that a retention basin by the mausoleum? Yeah. At the bottom of the mausoleum. Um, hmm. So Stantec is saying that um, they received our letter uh, regarding the field report prepared by Peter Palmieri um, that notes that the detention basins are not functioning or do not appear to be functioning as designed. Um, there's a plan of action to determine the causes of what may be impacting the functionality, to determine the flow rate entering the detention ponds during a dry period, to confirm whether groundwater is overstressing the ponds, and to determine the drawdown time of the detention pond during a dry period to compare with the design. And it may require bypass flow of any groundwater flows entering the ponds to make that determination of how quickly they're emptying. Um, Peter, they reviewed those action items with Peter. The information will allow everyone to determine what would be necessary to prevent ponding between storm events. They're going to take the initial actions in the next two weeks, weather dependent, and review additional corrective actions with the planning board and Peter prior to proceeding. So I assume at this point we let that progress unless somebody has a question or wants us to raise any more issues with them. Where is that? Where is it? The Second. memory care. The new memory uh, care. Opposite, uh, bridges. Opposite shop and shop up in 139. 
The old horse model um, up on 139. The old one? Yeah, to like use an old landmark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. As opposed to the young horse form. So everybody okay with that action item plan? <laughs> yeah. That sounds okay. like a plan. We don't need to approve it or anything. We just let them do their well. We just let them do their thing. They're right? going to do it anyway. Okay. Yeah, well, no, we've just been sort of trying to, to reach out to them to sort of prod them to get progress on that and it seems like um, sort of gradually we're making progress getting some success well I, I mean do you want to just write them a note saying we're in receipt of your of your letter and we, we look forward to uh, <laughs> um, seeing a resolution mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. so at least they know we're on top of it Okay, it is seven o'clock, so we can move on to our discussion. For this one, um, was this one sixty-three you wrote there? Yeah. Okay, I think this should. Can I just double check it? But I think that should be good. Let's see if I made any mistakes there. <coughs> Oh, that's interesting, though, because Dan Smith is now officially a member of the board, <coughs> but his signature is not yet on file with the Registry of Deeds. What's so if we wait a month, are we going to not have his signature on file? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yes, but, but we have a quorum, we have a quorum so, it shouldn't so you're matter. okay. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's our argument for just doing the reorganization today. I don't know. Uh, but then you filed twice. But I, then we filed what, twice. We're, Let's we're, see if we can muddle through. Yeah. We're only a couple okay. of weeks away. Yeah. So so should he sign it or not sign it? Yeah, sign it. Yeah, he no. can sign it. <laughs> yeah. We have enough. Yeah. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Are you um, here for Irving Oil? Yes. Are you on behalf of Irving Oil? No, I'm on behalf of the, uh, the developer. Oh, okay. Step forward. Just tell us who you are. Jonathan Coffman. Okay. Thanks. All right. We're ready to go. So I think then we need to, one of the board members needs to get this notarized, I guess. Um, um, do you remember how we did this can before? So, yeah, can somebody we? step, I, usually at the... I, um, I can't notarize, because I signed it. Me too. Yeah. Uh, well, usually we go next door to the town clerk. clerk. Yeah. But now that she's retired, I don't know if they have a notary there. I'm not Peg's sure. Peg's not a notary? Peg should be a notary. Is no. she? I'm not sure. She oh. should be. Well, we can... There's another notary in town hall. hall. I hope. <laughs> Okay. I assume so. Well, anyway, we'll figure it out, yeah. But I mean, I think it has to be... But we have Brian waiting, waiting for us, so... Yes. He can, um, he can yes. get it. Mike Rice? Uh, uh, Brian? Yeah. No, I think mean, one of the yeah. board members yeah. has yeah. to be... Yeah. Yeah. My brother, my, my Matthew, brother is my brother. Will you just okay. see if Peg yeah. has a notary? Brian. Yeah. In which case, yeah. somebody yeah. can just Thanks. run over real quick if um, she wants us to. Yeah. Can I remember doing that? Can I do it where I wasn't here the rest of the Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. That makes sense. Find a notary. Oh, excellent. I will. <laughs> Don't hurt your back. <laughs> he had back surgery. Oh, like a week or two ago. All right. So, um, so now we have a discussion about impossible voter and our decisions conditions for site plan number. SP 1-18 located at 92 Washington Street and 5-15 Schusset Street at the intersection of Washington and Schusset Streets for a new gas station with 10 pumps and 3,200 square foot convenience store. Everyone has in their packets a draft of the um, decision and the conditions. And the question is, in looking through the conditions, yeah, I think the biggest thing was the, um, the traffic, the post development tra traffic monitoring. So in those conditions, I pretty much used the um, the verbiage Jeff Dirk had recommended, um, and so I include the, the email from him that he sent to me. Uh, as you can see at the end of his email, he gave the option to add um, 
you know, the, the option for another peer reviewer, I mean, presumably him, probably, um, to then the board's peer reviewer to come back at the end of the process uh, to, I guess, review what, what they've done. Do we have a, she's Don't not worry. a nerder? Uh, she's not, and Sabrina is in France. <laughs> I let you down on my first mission. Okay. I'm wondering if somebody else in town hall might she be. Said no. I mean, I can take it to work tomorrow and okay. get someone to do it there. I can too. I can too. All of us have notaries at work. <laughs> I do that once. So we all have notaries at work, but apparently there is no notary in the building tonight, so we can't deliver you the release okay. without it notarized. I don't think they'll take it for filing. That's fine. I'll just um, come back. Uh, so one of us will get it notarized tomorrow and bring it back to Matthew, so he'll have it ready for you. I'd say by Wednesday to be comfortable. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right. That's great. All right. Thank you. All right. Good night. Thank you. So comfortable here. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you would be able to just not save yourself a trip, but yeah, that's all right. Fine enough. Thank you. So how much money do we have in the engineering review account now? Because we're going to also need money for Peter to review the construction process. Yeah, so for that one, um, I think it's down to, um, actually it's it's negative. It's, it's about negative 1,000, I think. Oh, so, we need some money. So we're going to have to, uh, um, obviously before, we, and I've sent an email to, uh, to Bob Calvin, and then I sent it to the, the he, he he got the guy at Irving Law and Boss, so I sent it to him as well. Uh, so obviously, before we sign the building permit, they're going to have to pay up. Uh, I forget what I, what I told them, but they're going to have to make a substantial. I mean, we need to get the estimate from, um, I guess we need to get Peter's estimate of the construction inspections. I assume you guys want to do that. Yeah, but as that's you usually do. somebody right. trying to come in? Somebody was looking in. But that's not. Sometimes I, when we well, close I, that door, I think people don't know that we're in an open in the public hole. meeting. We ought to get 5,000, 4,000 and a half. Yeah. Well, why don't we get the yeah. estimate yeah. from Peter, okay. Okay. That, that okay. run, okay. and then we're going to want okay. some money in there yeah, for, for the, the, um, the traffic uh, monitoring. Yeah, well, I think I've been so Matthew that. included in here yeah. Yeah. language <laughs> regarding the additional 2,000 above, yeah. um, which is being extra safe. I mean, the timing can be during that. I mean, we've got all sorts of. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically a negative 1,000 now. Well, just um, and so, I forget what I said. In the we email. don't need to determine that number to approve no, the conditions. No, we can approve <coughs> the conditions. Yeah, I mean, that's. So, that's everyone should look to see if they see any mistakes in the draft version of the conditions. Do you want to see a draft copy? Yeah, that'd be great. I, I may have a. An older version or somebody's. Uh, I mean, the things to really look at are um, the waivers. Right? The developer should provide for water. Do you normally write it like that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And from what, from what Bob Gavin told me, uh, he said. And I guess Mike, you can say more about this. That um, the the applicant's traffic engineer had no issues. That she reviewed uh, Heather Monaco. She reviewed the verbiage in there to traffic monitoring, and she said she had no problem. With Correct. Um, so I think we should be good check unless you have any issues. So no, I I believe the the uh, I believe she received the permit from the DOT. You know that we've been kind of out there for a while. Yeah, she sent some emails saying she got Yeah, I think she's almost there. I finally came out. There weren't no waivers on this, were there? Yeah, there were. Yeah, yeah. They're on page yeah. six. Page six or seven. So the first two waivers really have to do with the fact that the contour lines and the utilities are on the roadway, and they haven't surveyed the roadway. Um, That's A and B, right? A and B. Yeah, a and B. And, and then on C, the requirement for a three-foot wide landscape strip along the foundation wide yeah. wall because there's no landscape strip on three sides of the building. Um, and they're asking that we permit that. And they're also asking for a waiver on the requirement of 25% open space on the site. They have 19% open space. 
And that last one is a waiver, right? It's not a bylaw rule. It's a it's a site plan condition. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And I believe you guys already voted to approve the waivers. Yeah, we did. We did, yeah, we did. Yeah. in the public hearing, right? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. This looks good to me. All right. So you want to? I'll make a motion that we accept um, the conditions as written for site plan number SP1-18, Irving Oil Gas Station. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And abstaining? So abstaining yeah. Yeah. Well, Dan Smith voting. is abstaining because he was not present for the hearings in this project. And all four members of the planning board voting were at all of the, the meetings. All right. the public hearings. That's correct. Okay. A quorum was present and voting. All right, then during the meeting, Matthew, if you want to um, yeah. print it out in final, we've now approved it and we can sign both the decision and the conditions. Excuse me, what one would that be? Tonight. Okay. Because I believe um, I believe our engineer put the the waivers on the plan yeah. that required. Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. We were all set. Well, that um, well, actually, we're. I mean, one of the, the conditions is that all outstanding comments in the mineral engineers and land surveyors review letters as of March 27, 2018, April 30, 2018, be done. So we asked, and I think at that they're point, addressed, we the but we always kind of put that in there to cover yeah. ourselves in case there's something oh, that's fine. that shows up. Um, so. It, with the traffic monitoring conditions being the piece that was added really after our last meeting, after we we um, approved it. So as soon as Matthew is able to print out a clean copy of this, we'll sign it, we'll pass it around for signature during the meeting. And um, then it has to get filed with the um, clerk. clerk, clerk's office. Okay. And while, I'm, uh, if you guys want to uh, sign the actual the drawings. Uh, yeah. I've got three sets with the wa the waivers on the title sheet, um, and I think since it's site plan, you only mm -hmm. only need to sign the first page, um, unless you're feeling highly motivated. Or no, something. no. <laughs> I always like to sign them all because I feel like otherwise there's this hey, whole issue of someone could substitute pages. That's true. Yeah. And Twenty years from now, how do yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, well, I won't. Well, I won't stand in your way. Yeah. Twenty years from now, <laughs> you won't care. <laughs> <laughs> you might. Uh, yeah. well. Okay. Right. I guess we can do this after we finish off. Yep. The next is. Uh, well, no, we can't do our next discussion anyway. So. It's not until 7.30, and Robert Clark isn't oh, here. he's got to be here. Yeah. So we can, why don't we go ahead and sign these now? Sure. And then we can also make sure we don't have anything else on our little checklist here of administrative matters. Upcoming board meetings are June 4th and 25th. So Andy won't be here on the 4th, but if the rest of us are here, we'll have a quorum. Um, please review what you have on the agenda, though, because you may not have a quorum for some past site plan review work that we've done. Can we just sign the cover page? Can, can, I, can I read up on them? To, to is that worth? Officially, no. Okay. You have to you attend you at least one meeting, 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 meeting as an active member. You have to attend all yeah. the meetings except one. That's what the one. boss said. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you're right. All the meetings, you can only miss one. You can only miss one. <laughs> we'll put it that way. You can only miss one. Well, if there's one that I can just, one comes up that I, you know, I can yeah. just three things. Yeah. So if there's one where we've only had one meeting, mm -hmm. yeah. then you could get up to speed on that one meeting. Okay. And then you would be able to vote on the decision, and we could rely on you for a quorum. Okay. But remember, even for that, you still have to do the certificate of compliance, which is a bit of a nuisance. I mean, yeah, but it's better than it's not offering. having a quorum. Yeah, that's true. yeah I'd rather yeah. get them yeah. up to speed if we can. Sure. Because you never know, people get sick, typhoid yeah. fevers. Just <laughs> coming back around. <laughs> so you want from New Orleans? <laughs> but the only place I guess typhoid fever. Isn't it? I don't think we get it down there. <laughs> you watch, we'll all get struck down. <laughs> What are you doing? What are you doing now? It's like three thousand degrees in here. Yeah. We also tonight need to sign final drawings from Brigham, Brigham oh, yeah. and Women's Medical Building. Oh, 
Awesome. To get that moving forward. When do you think uh, they'll break ground on this? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your first name. John. Jonathan Bachman. Yeah. Um, when is it expected oh, to break ground on this? Um, that's a good question. I was going to ask you. The question is when? Haven't decided yet. Okay. It's going to be, there's um there's actually a restriction um, placed on the former oil company. Um, it has to be a course. Uh, they don't look like they're signing They don't actually have signing blocks on them. There's only the one signing block. But we just got to make sure we've got a, a copy here that we're going to keep. I Sometimes they're, they're placed elsewhere on the... Yeah, yeah, but, but I don't see any. I, 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 I want a couple pages in. I didn't see any. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Okay. So... Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, and when does it expire? 20, 20 years ago, there was something there? Really? A whole uh, year away. Well, a little less than a year, actually. Thank you. So is the hope that... Um, so there's nothing to do to speed that clock up? You basically uh, have to wait it out. Get, get that lifted um, yeah. from the oil company. That might raise more issues. So We don't want to get into a lawsuit by doing something that right. they can come back at us. Right. And because um, that not only jeopardizes me, it jeopardizes the owner. Yeah, you know, yeah. And so um, I, I think part of the part of the strategy, if you will, was that we didn't want them showing up and muddy in the waters while right. we were trying to get our approvals. Right. Now that you have your approvals, it's easier to try yeah, to find a resolution. We, In your industry. Well, in any <laughs> industry, you know, if someone doesn't like something, they just impact the audience with, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you've seen it, but I've certainly seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, um, and so we didn't want to run into that. Yeah. Um, so, and anyway, we, we just felt that it would be more prudent to wait until we got approvals before we approach the owners or close to them. So, so are we the last approval you need? Uh, the only approval that we need really is the uh, license to use the storage tank. And who does that one? Uh, it's the board of selectmen. Okay. That's, that's in two weeks. Okay. But uh, generally, you know, you've gone through all the other boards, you know, so we've been through the historical commission, the zoning board of appeals, planning board, the selectmen, Generally, they feel that you know they don't want to get in the way of other boards that have already vetted this right. public hearings. Right. Kind of, it's kind of like the last step, but there's a step that you have to fill in. Ostensibly, this will be a, um, a high value use of the site in terms of uh, tax revenue for the town. Right. Right. So, especially that the other. Some like a couple of the other businesses there aren't even operating at this point. The buildings are in rough shape too. So, so right. It's a, yeah. It's again. It's it's a, the the uh, the intensity of use on the site is a little bit less. We've got four or five buildings there now. So yeah, I think building. four. Yeah. One building in the canopy. So, and the amount of impervious surface, it will be less than it is current. It doesn't make, you know, I think we were looking for the wave at a 19 percent, I think 20 something percent was. 25 percent. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a lot. It, it's the, denser now. Yeah, it's denser now, let's just say that. You know, a lot more paving there now. Where do we end up with? So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So. Um, I think I got it. So we don't have. So the one question is. Um, so since we have that coming around, we can work on that, and then we have. <laughs> Unless they want to take <coughs> this next door. Are you, does someone want to take it next door? What do you need exactly? So this... Oh, no, I'll do that. Oh, you do that? Because <laughs> I have to make copies first okay. and all this sort of stuff, yeah. All right, then I think we're going to just sign the, the okay. decision. You guys are good to go. Yeah, if you want to. All right. Yeah. Appreciate have a good night, guys. The time you put into looking through all the plans and everything, you know, it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> we find it interesting. <laughs> We're just weirdos. <laughs> and we'll be in touch as far as that figure. Would you please? Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I'll speak for myself. I'm a weirdo. The best estimate. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say that for some of that figure that work out. So it's going to depend on your best estimate. All right. Yeah. And at some point, can you send me the um, the invoices that you've received already that have been uh, from them? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we can sort of account for it as well. Just in terms of yeah. Yeah. Just send me a reminder, but I can photocopy it. Yeah. Or I can PDF from all of it. No, that will work. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks so much. Have a nice Thank you. Good night. All right. So we have that decision. We've done the site plan and the decision. Um, Matthew, I would probably scale this back a little bit. Um, I'm working on this. Oh, was it two places? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember it's in two places. Yeah. The 845 discussion, is that just as to that letter, the direct letter? I yeah. Think we, I think yeah. we need to tone that, that letter down a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I can, so I can, I can change I can work on that. if you want. Yeah. Um, I just, I thought, I thought it might be good to put on the agenda just in case somebody might complain or whatever. I just thought it'd be safe to put that on the agenda. But we don't have new information, do we? No, no, no. Okay. It's just, yeah, right. just, yeah. And one thing with that, I was telling Andy, I don't know if he told you, but, um, um, but for all of you, I, I talked to, um, to Ed Thorne um, a few days ago just to sort of let him know because I figured, well, originally, I figured like he might be the one ultimately to sort of to tell George like this is important or you had a him, I think to, to address it to Ed Thorne the letter actually, which we can do if you want since he's technically head of DMI. But anyway, um, he, so then he had sort of said, um, um, uh, why don't we run it by town council first? Um, so obviously it's up to you guys whether you think that's necessary. No, 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 yes. no, 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 and, and I think we can. Our own council has opposed it. Well, but no, I, I actually want to. I want to tone this down yeah, a little bit. No, what it is is basically saying to George, we we appreciate that they comply with the site plan approval before giving them a certificate of occupancy Not with the we condition. Would appreciate it, but well, we, will, we, we expect that, uh, we our expect expectation. It, yeah. our, we yeah. expect you. We yeah. expect you. Sure. We expect the applicant to comply with the site plan approval before granting a um, certificate of occupancy. So should Dan be signing this also? I no. Think not. No. Yeah, I think probably no. not. Sorry. That'll mess things up. This, this is, but this is good because you have no responsibility and you get to watch. <laughs> I'm really like on this side of the table. No. So, so my feeling is, should, I mean, our expectation is George is the enforcement <laughs> officer, so we don't public need here. anything to yeah. compel him to do that. It shouldn't. We're just notifying right. him that we expect. Exactly. That's yeah. right. So it's just a, it's like a heads up. We don't need to compel him to do it because that's his job. I mean, you know. And and <coughs> I would think that our site plan approval probably said that they needed to give us an as built right before they get an occupancy. I think so. That's usually boilerplate. Well, I mean, that's, that's a double that's check, a, but that's I think in probably, the yeah. order condition. Oh, see, so yeah, we could add that to the letter too. So typically, Merrill would review the as built, or do they rely on like us to review it. They no. review it during the process. Um, right. We can have them review it. But that's something we've had, I think, fair to say we've had trouble, uh, or I've had trouble sort of enforcing because, like, yeah, I mean, at that point in the process, like, they're already sort of reviewed out. They have a lot of leverage over them and they're eager to get started. And once they get the CO, then, like, 
I'm trying to remind them we need the as built, then it's well. That's why they shouldn't get an occupancy permit until we get the as built. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure review right. it too. There could be huge variations. Well, on that. I would think that Merrill would, would review it. So, so we, we can review it, but Merrill is, is, has the ultimate responsibility, don't they? Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. every now and then we have a very simple site plan. Yeah. Where yeah. all we really need is an asphalt, and we can sort of, you know, you can kind of visually see that nothing changed. If the engineer put their stamp on it, it should comply right. anyway. Yeah, exactly. But the issue, but on a bigger development, like 220 Center Street, is just a lot of moving parts, right? So that, I would want to make sure that Peter reviews before they get an occupancy mm -hmm. permit, right? Mm -hmm. Because oh, okay. once they get an occupancy permit, sometimes occupancy permits go out, right. and by the time we get the as but remember, they're, they're, Merrill is there at key points mm. of the construction. So it shouldn't be a big surprise at the end. So it right. shouldn't be a big surprise at the end. So yes, yeah, so for this one, the as built should be cursory at best because he's been there through the process as it's going. Right. And if there was a big variation, somebody should have come to it. Right. And, and when we could have made a change. Right. As long as the engineer stamps the asbel. So for this one, yeah, for the conditions for for uh, 262 at Oak Street, um, yeah, um, petitioner shall submit an asthma plan with a written statement <coughs> that all conditions of this vote have been complied with before an occupancy permit may be issued. So I guess, um, and that may be something that I should sort of talk verbally with George and Tracy too, just to, to tell them that like this is something we really want to sort of when we, enforce we, we're not just over. putting that down for exactly yeah giggles. well it's, their, it's yeah. their job to enforce it exactly but I mean if they know that I mean if if yeah if, the asphalt should if come they know, in if they're even aware of it yeah. and we should have a chance to have Peter review it yeah and any issues brought to the board yeah if, if there are any prior to an occupancy permit being yeah you know, it's so funny because they go through the whole process of checking with all the boards before they issue a building permit. But in some way, the occupancy permit is our last chance to enforce conditions. Yep. Right. Exactly. But they don't yeah. do a, ro uh, a, a slip for that. A routing slip for that. Yeah, maybe, maybe we should. Maybe, maybe they should. Well, that's something you may want to bring up. Um, Becky with Ed Thorne as the director of um, municipal, municipal inspections. CMI. You may want to, or you know, the board may want to bring that up with him. <coughs> you know, for this one, I don't think Peter's doing construction inspections for this one actually. For which one? 262 at the Oak Street. But theoretically, if the engineer stamps the proposed plan and then stamps the as built, they're stamping with their. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the but all they're yeah. stamping is that's as it was built, not that the as built complies with the. Approved no, plan, I don't no, think. No, because no. any variation, they would need to go back for approval. It's like you're building In a theory, structure yeah, and you have a, there's an affidavit that, that the structure was built as per plan. Well, uh, just just like the, the other night when Mr. Murphy Sr. was in and he talked about filling in the retention pond. Okay? <laughs> you mean two minutes after he asked for the building permit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I mean that that, that would be a, yeah. I recall that the ASGO would would pick that up. Uh, uh, I love Bill, but his engineer probably told him, "Hey, you get approval and you can do it." But, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, in this case, I mean, if he's not doing inspections, then all the more reason for us to insist on yeah, get the ASGO. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why we don't have money for inspections, though. I mean, we really should have either inspections or review the as built built into our engineering account, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, in this case, it's not so much the engineering account, it's just that I think at the time um, we just didn't um, ask Peter to do a, an estimate of. I mean, we just didn't make the decision that Peter should do it. I mean, but when that I first doesn't mean we can't ask Peter to do it. Yeah, I mean, I suppose maybe we still could at this yeah, point. Yeah, under our regular. Um, this point is pretty far oh, yeah, along yeah, in the come process. On. I just need to come. I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah. All, All right. right, have a good night. All right, take care. Thank you. I could have brought that up for you. Right? Thank you. <laughs> um. 
So, how are you doing? Hello, Mr. Clark. Yes, so we're we're actually running a little ahead of schedule tonight, so we're ready for you. You're ready for all right. <laughs> well. So we're so the discussion item with Mr. Clark of the Office of the Conservation Commission is to discuss the feasibility of creating a new map of town owned land and other open space parcels. This, this is the one that's around, I yep. believe it's the same as that. And if we look in the bottom corner, the last one I have here says revised August 27th, 2007. Yep. Uh, since 07, the wow. town has done a lot with pieces of land, so these maps really aren't telling us. Is that one saying 07, Dan? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, wow. So the yeah, question like is, where Kaleo do we get funding to do this? Here. Can we apply to, um, like, CPC money? We probably can, yeah. Uh, let me just, I'll tell you the story as I understand it. Yeah. Uh, Brian has been wor had been working on it. Yeah. We've been talking with him over the last two or three months. We were understanding that they were about ready to print a new one. Oh. And it appears that's not the case. So I haven't personally talked to Merrill, but uh, Brian was said, oh, Merrill's within a couple of weeks of giving us the new map. Well, I I don't know. Have you, you haven't talked to Merrill? I, I haven't, we well, haven't heard. Uh, but I just think we, we need a newer map because I know in my office it looks foolish when someone comes in and you show them this and tell them it's, uh, it's, it's good except that old. it's 12 years old. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't, doesn't do much for what the information they need. It's not that expensive to get a new map made, is it? I don't know, because well, who's going to tell them where all the new town on land yeah, is? That's, that's the thing. I mean, it might, <laughs> right it might be, it might, I mean, it won't be super expensive, but it might be somewhat expensive. No, they use the GIS maps. Oh, yeah. Or yeah. do they use um, assessor maps? Both. So the assessors have all that data. They know yeah. what the town has taken over. Yep. Uh, I would have to say my experience is that we can't rely on the assessor's records all the way. Right. Okay. Because we've run into that a number of times. It's a place to start. Okay. Thinking about it, I really think we're going to need a, leave. a group <laughs> organization. <laughs> <Otherwise, laughs> each one of our departments needs to kind of look at what they've done over the last 10, 11 years, and then put it all together in the bowl and try to sort it out and then get it back on a map. Well, but Merrill's done this before, right? They, they did that map. Yeah, yeah, they did. Well, how did they do it last time? That way? Basically that oh, way, yeah. Oh, yeah. just ask them for were, you, were you part there. of the process back in 07? Were you part of the process in 07? Not right on with it. I was a bit, no, they have but not really part of it, no. Who, well, uh, it, Brian was talking about, when we were talking about doing master plans, he said, you know, there may be, the, to the extent the master plan includes open space or recreational lands, there may be the possibility of applying to the CPC to get some money we to map those things There's out. There's a lot of this stuff available online, though. Yeah, you know should. the way you Who's have access compile? to the registry? You yeah, I do. I can pull the same thing graphically. But Merrill does different software. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, but I it would take a long time to pull from the registry. Uh, well, does. Not, not on the software I have, just and overlays on Google go and you can just zoom in, click on a parcel that tells you the loans and where the property is. It's a necessary public document that we, ha we have to have. <laughs> Does it make sense a lot to talk to Pia? I don't know who Well, but Jim is saying that no. he has some special software that no, might let, also let, help. Let's us talk to Peter. Okay. And ask him for a proposal on it. And ask him a for a proposal. proposal. Yeah. Who's paying for it? Right at the present time. I don't think it's that much. Right in the present time, the North South River people are trying to put something together and they're asking us for an updated sure, version yeah. which we can't give them. And I understand Old Colony Planning Council is looking for basically the same information. Oh really? So uh, we but no, we don't, can't give them any of this. This is So we're just looking at town owned and, and uh, town owned land? An open space. Well, no, I think is that, is that something we can get from the assessors? Just a listing of it. In this map, there's yeah. like uh, seven or eight different categories. Of so anything that's in Chapter 61 yep. that was on there. Yep. Commonwealth. So anything owned by the state, anything owned by City of Brockton, owned stuff for water. That hasn't changed much. Town conservation. That's changed. Yeah. And town of Pembroke has probably changed. Wildlands Trust. Maybe a little bit. 61B. Private forest? I don't know what private forest means. 
Uh, Doc Roberts up off Wally Street has some uh, private cars. Oh. Which and it's not six to, to one? No, well, no, didn't he can, um, cultivate trees in that? Yeah. yeah. Well, but usually that's under Chapter 61. That should be a 60 agricultural use, 61 right? 61 forest. But then here they have private forests. Well, whatever. Someone's got a private forest. <laughs> Maybe uh, he's just never filed for 61, right? Really? No, you could be having agricultural use without actually. Looks like this is the only private forest, forest we got. What's, um, right what's the dog down What's that? that? Three. What's this? You know? the is that where the, uh, landing, uh, is that where the landing strip is? That's uh, Doc Roberts's piece, I believe. Oh, yeah. that's Dwelly Street then. No, this is the other Doc Roberts from there. The other one from Route 53. Oh, oh. It's up and back is how. Oh, place. Iacobucci. No. No? Well, no, this is where the. So that's the um, Herring Run right there, right? Oh, no, this is Red Barn Road right here. Oh, Herring Run's back here. No, back here. This goes way back. Yeah, back. Oh, so it's further up, closer to Red Barn. Okay, I get it. Anyway, actually, that's actually the piece that was shipped. It's been up for sale just recently down here. The one with the long, longer driveway. Oh, with the dilapidated house. Yeah, Could that's be. That's what that one looks like. Could be. It's for sale. <laughs> don't I don't think it went anywhere. <laughs> it was not well described. Oh. Um, so. Um, yeah, is it up with the, the, So, so the, the next step is really to talk to Peter about yeah, what yeah, he would need yeah. and what yeah. kind of money we're talking about to do it, and then the question would be to try to work with conservation to see if we could come up with the source of the money. Right. And then who else would be involved? Anybody else working on open space recreation issues like that? Or is well, it just you guys? Well, Kathy Salmon would be involved to some extent because I think we'd at least be getting the preliminary data from them, from the assessor's office. And then I guess Bob Clark would probably want to look at it and, and see where they're Well, that's why we want Merrill in the process, stuff. because they yeah. can put all the players together. Yeah. Yeah, and they do, they do this all the time. Yeah, that's right. It, it appeared, it, and we're talking with Brian, all that it was never a big issue, but it's a big issue when Brian's not available to Yeah, to, to I, I, do don't, it. I don't think it's a big issue. I think it's we've done it before, and we get the right people in the room yeah. to do it, and we get the right and source of data. Really to do it. I just wanted, some, wanted us to get going with it, yeah, not let it go sense. another six or eight years. And, and, and by the way, it may not be in the budget, but we're we'll coming up on we, we, we'll special town meeting. We'll be at fall town meeting, and yep. you know, if it costs us some money, we'll ask for it. I, but this would be a good use of CPC money to start to really map out the trails. Uh, well, that, that's something that may be a completely separate we thing. We, we need we need just a basic uh, open map. space, basic map first. Yeah. Trails or something else. Yeah. That yeah. I would say goes for CPC money. Like but side this side is a necessity for the out. town. It's so like you think the document. town should pay for it? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We're just All right. So we'll put it. Next time we have Peter in, we'll put it on our agenda, so we don't have to pay for him to come in twice. Of course. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. And you all. All right. Thank you for coming in. I'm surprised it's that long. Wow. What? Yeah, me too. We did a recent zoning. That's 11 map. Well, years. We, do this, we redo the zoning maps yeah. anytime we change zoning, so that happens <coughs> a lot more frequently. Yeah. So, Matthew, when is our next, um, on June 4th, what do we have on that um, agenda right now? Yeah, so that, um, I do have con some concerns for that one, as I guess I mentioned there. So June 4th, uh, at 6.45 is the public hearing um, for Dominic's Way, continued. Although I guess if, um, Andy, if you can't come on June 4th, then we can't really do any, we can't do that one unless you want to do this, the whatever the certificate of compliance, you know, that option. Have we only had one public hearing on that so far? I thought we had two. Yeah, we, for Dominic's we Way, had two. We've, we've had like yeah, we've had two or three. We had um, yeah, so, so, Dan wouldn't be able to do a certificate of compliance. It's, you exactly. can only miss one. Yeah, and so. Oh, I see. Andy would have to do a so certificate. So yeah, what I'm saying is we need the, the the four, Dan, Tom, Andy, and Becky would all have to be there based on what's who's been there previously. Was Jim? Were you in any of those? No. No. Uh, I, I, I um, see, so the difficulty with that is that one is they're complying with everything, except they've got a bunch who don't like the project because of the drainage. Right. And, and the drainage is complying with everything. <laughs> right. So, you know, my feeling is, uh, geez, I, I'm sorry I can't make it. We should be able to improve that subdivision and move on. 
Yeah, but we can't approve it without you. I know. So my question is whether, what Anybody is the hearing the after that, June 25th? Yeah. You could open the public hearing and then continue it because you don't have a quorum present. For that's what I was going to say. Can exactly. we move it to the 25th? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's what we should do, yeah. What else do we have on June 4th? So June 4th, um, also the Wolf's Den public hearing is continued to uh, 7.30 on June 4th. How and many public one, hearings have we had on that one so far? One. Just one. And Dan was here for that, right? I think he was. Was it uh, last hearing? You were here last last week, wasn't yes. it? Yeah, last wasn't it last week that we had the first public hearing on Wolfston? I have to double check. I think so. Yes, it was. was the first. Yeah, because yeah. um, I mean, Bill Murphy was here during it and was talking yeah. about adding extra parking and filling yeah, in the right. drainage. And that was our <laughs> first <laughs> time seeing the plan. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so in that case, I think we're comfortable going ahead with that because you could always certify that I you missed one meeting. Correct. And Dan provides a quorum if anything goes awry there. And if Dan has to miss a meeting, Andy can certify and come back and vote. So right. I think we're okay going ahead with Wolves Den. What else is on the agenda? And then 815 is the uh, Libby's Lane. And uh, that also, we've only had one, right? Yeah, I think that was last week too. Oh, that, uh, uh, that's Goslin? Yeah. yeah, about Goslin. Um, so June 4th, you're saying, is the public hearing? Yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, so was Dan was here for that one, too. Yeah. And, and Dan and... Little, uh, you were here for that one. You oh, were here last week. Oh, sure. You were here. I wasn't here last week. Oh, you weren't oh, yeah. here last week. You, you and Dan Taylor one? was. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And you were here. So you're going to have a quorum for that. Not, that would be only missing one. And you, right. So I think it's the same thing. We yeah. could go ahead with that. And that's another case where the applicants complied with all the subdivision rules and regs. Mm -hmm. They were going to make some adjustment based on a couple things that uh, Peter had brought up. Right? Yeah, but they weren't major things. I mean, right. They were asking for very little in the way of waivers or anything else. So we may be able to vote uh, Libby's Lane next week. So we should keep that as a public hearing. Wolves Den will keep as a public hearing. Dominic's Way, though, I don't think we're going to have a quorum on that, so we might want to give notice. So we're meeting Tuesday next week? No, it's, it's no. Not. Oh, June 4th. I say, June, June 4th. 4th. I say next yeah. week. I'm, okay. I'm, June 4th. I'm next meeting. Next so meeting. for that, you can open the public hearing and then... And then continue it. And then continue right. it, yeah. No, I mean, but, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, for Dominic's way, I think you could do it if, just if Andy certified compliance or maybe Steve's But we can't quorum. vote. Well, you can close the public hearing. We could close the public hearing and vote at the next meeting. Oh, I see. I mean, yeah. I guess that wouldn't be ideal, I guess. No. I don't yeah. like it. Not with, with this, the public hearing. And with this one, yeah, I see. There, yeah. there's, there were enough people who were in the room that you really want to make it, you want to make it look right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And we want it to be right. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean it the way I, I realized that's what I'm saying. It, it didn't sound good. We want it to be right. So no. the, 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 the whole thing with the person being elected, yeah, you still need to... You still need the vote to be a quorum, I guess, at the time. Yeah, yeah so on Dominic's Way, um, should we indicate in the agenda that Dominic's Way is, um, will be continued. continued? Yeah. So that people know not to show up for no good reason if they're checking our agendas because they're interested in that one. Right. Okay, anything else on June 4th? Uh, also, Yeah, so um, what they've also, this is kind of confusing, what Libby's Land has also done just today, actually, they submitted, well, they gave me kind of previous warning, but they submitted a Form A um, to, uh, to split off the, basically the lot that contains the existing house. Yeah. Uh, from, which was pre, I mean, which I think is shown in the subdivision drawings as being part of the subdivision, but they want to split it off with a Form A. Um, I generally don't like that, except for the fact that this is actually going to be fronting on Forest Street. Forest Street with its driveway. Like if the driveway were coming into the Street. subdivision, Taylor Street. Taylor Street. Taylor Street. Taylor Street. But I know you mean, yeah, yeah. If it's the driveway were coming into <coughs> the new road, Taylor I prefer Street. to keep the subdivision together. Yeah. But if Comes it's fronting Taylor, Taylor Street. Street for the driveway, yeah, and front it actually makes sense. But the, I think the thing is, it seems to me that they need to then modify their subdivision drawings to yes. show that. I mean, but we need to think about it. They could come in with a 4 May, split that lot off, 
put their driveway wherever they want, come in a month later with a subdivision plan, and we, we really can't do anything about no. it. The reason why I, I'd like to keep the subdivision, I mean, together, I would like to encourage people to do, keep it within the subdivision plan is because I think I've learned from my own life that subdivision plans get complicated when um, something's a Form A and then it's not shown on the plan the well, way yeah, it actually I mean, gets built. Safety-wise, it's much better to have the driveway come out the subdivision road. That house then has underground utilities, not more stuff. Yeah. But it's an poles. existing house, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so it already yeah. has all its utilities yeah. and everything. And it yeah. probably already has a driveway on to yeah. the yeah. So, yeah, if this well, were we just can, a At the end of the day, we can't stop. No. I mean, if this were just a lot that was coming out onto the new subdivision and they were going to build the new house and they said, but we have frontage on Taylor Street, be I different. might balk a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, right. Because they'd be like, you know, you're bringing your utilities, you're doing everything off of the new road. Yeah. Can't we keep it part of the subdivision? But... Yeah, in this case, it makes more sense for it actually to be not part of the subdivision, I would think, just sort of intuitively. I mean, we could always request that. It's irrelevant. When they come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't really have choice mm -hmm. on Form A. Yeah. We, we... It's a legitimate Form A? Um, yeah. It's a, basically, it's an approval, not required. Is the but I would suggest it. to them that their, that their subdivision plan is going to have to be modified to indicate that that's... Yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah, I, I mean, think unless, yeah. unless we approve the subdivision first and then we approve it. But they're coming in coming with a revised through. subdivision plan anyway. I guess it'll be somewhat revised based on Peter's Yeah, because yeah. the lot will be coming out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anything else on the fourth? So nothing so far, but I'd say based on previous experience, in the next, you know, week and a half, whatever, two weeks, there's a pretty good chance a few other things will sort of pop well, up. Well, we'll have some discussion. So what I would like yeah. to do is on one of those where Peter's here, um, that we add just a 10 or 15 minute discussion about this new map. Since Peter's going to be here on June 4th, we can put on the agenda item the same agenda item about the new map of town owned lands and talk to Peter about pricing on that. C couldn't we ask them to prepare a proposal? I mean, it doesn't cost the town anything to prepare a proposal, and then he'd be kind of prepared to present the proposal? Um, we could ask him. I don't know that we usually ask him for a proposal, do we? Well, we should. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we have for maps. We have? Yeah. 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 Okay. We do yeah. only, only so that we know how much and, money to um, appropriate. We've got some he time here. For it. Well, he's going to know what information we have that we can give him. Right. It's what he's going to need to know. Right. But he must know that from yeah. when he's done it before, don't Well, not really. He doesn't know what we've bought or for you can at least ask conservation the land. Tell us for you know, we'll have the. I think we need to have a conversation with him first before he can do a proposal. Right. Because we can tell him what we what we're looking for, and we got plenty of time because we're going to have to yeah. get the m money in. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the assessors can give us an awful lot of that. Yeah. And and they already really have yeah. this. Oh, that data on their is all system. out there. Yeah. 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 It shouldn't be that expensive because they're updating what they already have in their system. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the. I mean, I've talked about this with Kathy Salmon. I think that's the crucial thing is to to have this work with the assessors because if there are, you know, as Bob Clark said, if there are mistakes or things where the assessor's data isn't correct, then this is the opportunity to, correct to, to have the assessors data. correct them. And yeah. then in the future, once you have the template set up and, you know, if the assessors are constantly updating that data, if we want to do that same map again two years from now, it'll be virtually free because all he has to do is bring mm -hmm. the new data into the exact same template. I mean, if, you know, GIS, it'll be, you know, uh, easy peasy. Um, so, you know, by doing that, I think it really, um, it'll just make things so much easier down the road. It just makes so much more. And, you know, they, the assessors have, like, you know, Kathy Salmon gave me, like, the little pamphlet of all the different categories they have for types of land. I mean, they've got, like, a million categories for every sort of possible permutation of land use you could imagine. So Do we even think pamphlets. about putting all our stuff into a GIS? Because this seems to come up quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, I think, I mean, I think Merrill has GIS from what Peter told me. So, yeah, I mean, presumably it should just go from the assessor's GIS to Peter's GIS, and it should be all the tricky thing would be making Bob Clark making the corrections when he feels it's, it's wrong. Yeah. And I think the main thing there is when Bob Clark says, okay, I think this land is actually this, we go back to the assessors and have them change the data if possible. Well, or we have to go to the registry and yeah. to the board of selectmen and find out if it was actually accepted the way it was supposed to be. Yeah, well, maybe that's, that's a problem yeah. sometimes. Yeah. But the assessors generally 
are the last stop. Should be. Yeah. If we have a GIS if system that hooks in with like mass GIS, yeah. but it should. I mean, that's an awful lot of stuff we can mash together. There's got to be one place where. Can you do it backwards? You input the uh, yeah. name of the owner, which would be Tom Pepper. Pepper. Right, well, the way a GIS system works is going to actually have the shape of the parcel over here. Although, yeah. actually, there right. could be the things attached. that are a matter of town's so record could, that no one search, did. You could say, you know, yeah, you, well, you're searching. It's GIS accessible to anybody online. Yeah, if you go to MAGIS. Or if you switch on search MA, GIS, Oliver, like you'll see a searchable map of GIS information that the listing. town has provided, the oh, FEMA like, maps, what's, everything. What's Oliver? It's the name for the GIS search site program. So, uh, Oliver, yeah. I don't know yeah. why it's called Oliver. MA, GIS, so Oliver. Oliver. And then you can search oh, any address and and you can add tiles and layers and it starts with the tax parcels um, yeah. and it's not always completely up to date I have to say like I was looking at something today where um, it was in Halifax and it wasn't the there some land had been added to another um, plan and that wasn't reflected on the GIS maps that are publicly available but for the most part, the publicly available GIS maps are, you know, a decent reflection. Yeah. They get the data from a lot of different sources. Jim, do you use Oliver? That yeah. Massachusetts GIS yeah, is so it said, pretty if we had accurate? Yeah, so if we had something that would like be able to pull that data from Oliver into it, all we'd really need is property line information. But like on my land, Oliver isn't accurate because. Um, there was a, so this is why I keep saying that I get worried when we do four A's in a subdivision. There was a subdivision plan for my neighborhood on Vernon Hall Drive. The subdivision plan was approved by the board. It was filed with the Registry of Deeds in the recorded land section of Registry of Deeds. The developers apparently came in and did a four A because they're using the subdivision road as the pub, as the road they were coming off of and they created they rearranged some of the lots those lots there's registered and recorded land in the subdivision those two lots are only registered land so they didn't record a new plan in the rec on the recorded side yeah they only recorded a plan on the registered side and the plan that gets recorded on the registrar side is a very simple plot plan, very simple plot plan. And that's what land court takes. They don't take the engineered subdivision plans. So this GIS seems to pull the subdivision plans from the recorded side and doesn't... And they don't, yeah, they don't pull the registered. Uh, and, they, and they didn't pull the registered land court plan at least in that case, I don't know how frequently that, probably that happens. happens. A lot. You think? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why when you when you divide off four and it's like several years old. A lot of it. The GI all of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. not complete. But it's a good. You know, it's better than the blank screen. <laughs> you know, it gives you a pretty good idea where stuff is and. Well, and it has and the new FEMA that. maps on there. The the supposedly has the new brand new FEMA flood maps. And so you can do an overlay of the FEMA flood maps. You can do an overlay of known wet. It sh it'll show wetlands. known wetlands, yeah. known wetlands, pre-identified wetlands. That's not necessarily the end of the story. And it'll show um, town-owned land. So I bet if we looked at Oliver, the town-owned land looks like that map rather than any newer. Well, that's why I said that's what we need to get from the assessors an actual listing, even if it's just by address of what what the town, town owns? Unless, I'd be curious if Oliver, if we picked a, something that got transferred, say, eight years ago, it wouldn't show up on that map, but it might show up on Oliver because they may draw that from the tax parcel information. Maybe. So the Oliver system draws from tons of different GIS sources, assessors, it draws from FEMA, it draws from, um, I don't know where it gets its Title V buffers from, maybe just from regulatory it, 
some algorithm. For the zone two designation. For title yeah, five. I think so. I think that's what she uses. I think they're tone, but all they are is like a dot where the well is and a circle around it. Oh no! They but they have these big buffer zones around water sources and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and so you have a lot of layers you can find, and it, you know that's that's sort of a starting point for a lot of this. Anyway, I use it every day these days. Uh, so we're we're almost done. The we can talk about the visual screening options for Habermas Solar Project along Habermas Street, and the fact that um, Ed and Sabrina are saying that we need to get three quotes. Mike Valenti has said that the current fencing along part of Habermas Street will be fixed or replaced, but not extended. If they fixed or replaced it, that would be a big improvement, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so Matthew, uh, so Matthew's asking if we want to get three quotes, and I think we had said we do, right? So we have one. Right? We, we have one. How much was it? <laughs> it's, but the what I mean, like, but what are the, what, what, yeah. wait, what, what are the three quotes for? Three quotes, the three quotes are just for the materials, right? I think it would be for work also. Did I include labor in that when I, I didn't did see that anywhere. What? Well, you missed it. No, I, I remember it in my packet. You were in the So when they say screening for, what do they want to plan? Trees, so when we did the site plan for the solar field, mm -hmm. we included in there, we asked for $25,000 for some screening, mm -hmm. and then we would determine what I mean, screening I mean, would necessary would be after it was up and it was done, mm -hmm. and we where the abutters had a shot at looking at it. Yeah. So we put, we had them put $25,000, give us $25,000 to spend on that. So th we're trying to figure out how to spend it. Are and whether any, we need some more money. Yeah. Are any of others dissatisfied with Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, have we heard, really? Oh, yeah. There was only one. Have we one really heard, though? From. Who's been, who, who looks well, and then the other question was whether or not, I mean, <coughs> I personally oh. don't like the look of it if I'm traveling down Hoppenmuck Street. And oh, look the other way. Well, yeah, but we, to me, that is, that is, that's where our high school Technology. is, that's where our yeah. fields are, I, that's what people when, pass by. I know, but I, I, I gotta tell you, honestly, I, I just, this is just my opinion, though, yeah. is I, I don't even notice it, and I'm, I'm in communities all across Massachusetts all the time, and there's solar fields everywhere now. Oh, I don't I was in Acton right. the other day, we were going to Devon's, I mean, they're all over, mm -hmm. Lexington, Concord, Acton. One of the problems. You see them all the time, yeah is that the two abutters that are complaining <coughs> live up on a hill. And unless, so they're going to look unless, down no matter what. Unless we put 25 foot trees in. And then you're going to shade them. You're, not, you're never going to, it's, it's not going to make any difference. It's actually further than that back. Yeah. I, well, um, I, I got to tell you also, I, I, I think it's so. said that when they their driveway and, and was we, bad. I, I'm saying this just, again, in my opinion, we'll, I, we're going to try our best to, to buffer shield it. it. We're going to try our best to shield it. But, boy, that looks a lot better than a dump. Yeah. Yeah, but I never but lived in the town when it was a dump. <laughs> but most of those people have bought since after there was a dump there. And it was a beautiful field. And the whole thing is is that we got yeah. rushed into doing this. Yeah, we did. Because they had a deadline by the end of the year. And there was no time for a landscape plan. Right. That's right. And it looks like crap. Yeah, so let's figure it out. <laughs> let's figure it out. But we need to figure the right where to go. So yeah. wh what I'm saying is with this limited budget, we may want to <coughs> and see where the abutters are who, are, who have the most... We'll, we problem can do. with it, and maybe maybe we we don't need more than this. Maybe this is good enough, and we strategically place why? the buffering where where it'll have why the most impact for the abutters who are the most okay. effective. Instead of us actually deciding, why don't we actually send that out in the proposal and have them suggest screening? You mean ask the people proposing? Yeah, like what they're suggesting. Like what are they? What would they suggest to screen that area? Because who, is that a, who is, is that a definite enough RFP? Who 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 is they? So, so we have to do a request for proposals. I think right. it actually doesn't have to be an RFP. If I understood Sabrina, we just, just have to gather need, them. We just need three quotes. Quotes from three different you know sources. But let me like ask another question. Tomasi, one, you know, Can we hand it over to the DPW? Mm -hmm. They don't I mean, want anything to do with it. I mean, it, yeah, it's something I don't have And I don't think we want to give up our control of it. Okay. If it's really over we promise people. If it's over $25,000, yeah. we have to get public bids. If it's under $25,000, we have to get 
we can request pricing from three different individuals. Correct. That's okay, but if it's over twenty five thousand, we actually need three separate bids. Like bids. we have to yeah. do an RFP. I think you have That's to go correct. public with it too. Yeah. What are you bidding? Right? You need, you need some sort of plan, right? Or yeah. You're just gonna let each. I mean, Dan, yeah, what I did that it's in, your, it's in that yes. was prepared by me. That's showing uh, alternating between uh, upright junipers and uh, rhododendrons. Which will help the person driving by. Yeah, that's all. But they're not going to help the people well, up no, on the hill. Well, no, it will to some extent because one of the things we, he was yelling about was when they come to the end of their driveway, they hit the shoulder. Yeah, they come down. Don't they come down? Yeah. 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 I'm at their home, but they're pretty well screened there with trees in their yards, too. I would think so. It's like this. Six or seven houses that look directly on it. Well, and then people are always yelling about it on Facebook. <coughs> I will say this, you know, when, um, oh, I and I remember I Arthur it. when, uh, oh, really? Yeah. I remember when we had those, the, we were having those hearings, Arthur had come in and said, that, you know, there's like two houses that look over it, and I was like, there's seven. You know, it goes all the way around that curve towards the high school. So, you know, well, I think the worst part of it is directly across from those people who, you know. Who you did know. come out. Well, we, yeah. we can, and that proposal I put together, Dan, I put, I made it for 800 millennial feet, which was. Which, Dan? Smith. Okay. No. Oh. No. <laughs> I thought you were talking about Smith. He's looking at me, said Dan. <laughs> well, I can't, no, I, I couldn't you. see you through Jim. Uh, uh, but basically, I, yeah. I went 800 feet. That would go all the way down. Right. Yeah, okay. And that was. Basically, uh, I think I had a total of, so I have 80, 80 plans on that, plants on that, which is every 10 foot. Were you trying to fit that into the 25,000 or were you? No, I was trying to put plants every went. 10 foot. I can't remember how much. So this is $37,840 was, was this now, breakdown. The material cost is, a, is less than that, obviously. Yeah. I see. It's like, who's going to maintain them and stuff like that to get them going? Nobody. A lot of money to just put out in the desert. Yeah. Well, or do we look at fencing? We sure. talked about that too. What I found odd is that they left the fencing like this far off the ground. Like I didn't anybody notice that. could just walk crawl on that if you want to go oh, in. Oh, it's there. on those cement blocks. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand that. It's kind of a Yeah, it's a supposed to limit too. access. You know, I don't think we wanted to like poke anything into the ground up there because oh, God knows what would come out. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> a capped landfill. Yeah, so at the time I mean, this would have been a lot more ideal if we had, had required a landscape plan as part of the site plan yeah. review. But they were under pressure to meet certain deadlines or mm -hmm. lose money. Um, from Credits, state credits, or something? It's federal tax credits, I think. They, they and then there, there was things. also they didn't want to give us the money. Remember that part? Yes. <laughs> and then we had the money out of them. So, it, and then we had to fight hard to actually get the 25000 mm -hmm. that had been promised in lieu of a landscape plan. I think planning on projects like this, I, I kind of get annoyed from the other side. That there's no so specificity. So, so say you call a contractor like me prior to being here, you know, and say, hey, I, we want to put a screen up. Oh, well, you know, I get all elaborate and fancy and come up with a plan and it's going to be like, and, and the next person's just going to throw, you know, Home Depot a little, you know, Right. Green. And how do you compare them? No. Yeah. It's not, you, know, you don't, there's no right. plan, there's no... Well, we so, don't require plans. So, we, so we could process. create a plan. This is the issue. We have gone out there once or twice? Once. We talked about going out again, but but we haven't. Um, I think most of us drive by it almost every day. Mm -hmm. so, so the issue is we need to we need to move forward on it and how do we best move forward? Do we develop a plan of our own? We don't really have money to hire a landscape architect to come in and tell us what the plan should look like that we, then we put up to bid. We just don't have the money for it. Well we you get 25 grand and, and that's a, a, a start. Spend the money you know, so you spend two thousand, two thousand, mm -hmm. and then everybody's apples for apples, and you get you get a quality job when it's done that everybody's bidding apple for apple. Someone's going to be responsible for it, maybe. Do we than, do we even have a landscape architect that we no. use? 
does does Peter have somebody on stage? Don't we just need a kind of a sketch saying showing yeah. the property yeah. and saying this is where the trees go? You really don't need a landscape architect. Well, any any you know, any good just landscape need a standard. Yeah. Any good landscape person's gonna be able to go in there and figure out how to do it. Um, especially it's a little complicated because it's almost like you're plugging in, right? Because mm -hmm. you got existing buffer there, and you want to use as much of that as you can because we're limited in what we can spend. Rather than take twenty-five thousand and try and accomplish something to keep everybody happy, maybe take twenty-five thousand and, and make a project. You know, well, so, the so you have an end result. That's, that's the town is valuable. also indicated that we might be able to get some additional money like at Paul Town Meeting one time money because the town's getting a lot of revenue from this mm -hmm. right so the town might take a little bit of that revenue <coughs> to add to the 25 um, well. and they've been in Ed and Sabrina have indicated that they might even support that effort to contribute extra funds if we knew exactly what we want and what it would benefit the town but here's the issue: we need to be limited to twenty-five thousand if we want to keep it below the threshold. Right. Um, My understanding is, even if it's below twenty-five thousand, we need it's three. It's regarded offers. as best practice to at least get the three quotes. Yeah, right. yeah, but three yes. quotes is very different <coughs> under, than under doing a bid for yeah. three. Yeah. We're going to have to advertise it, and <coughs> go out yeah. publicly. And We're not really giving them something to bid on. Right. Well, we haven't I'm, told them where these trees are going. Thousand. You could solicit three bids. Yeah. Right, so I almost think maybe. Okay. Under 10000 you can give the job away. But you can break it up into multiple projects. You get right. 2000 to design it and then try and keep it under 25000 to do it. Break it up into 30 trees. <laughs> no, 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 not two construction projects. <coughs> I mean, but a design no, and yeah, a that makes sense. I mean, like it, for design, if we hired Merrill, to, if they have landscape architects on staff, yeah. We hired Merrill as our town Just engineer to paper, design it on yeah. paper. Then, and then we have twenty. Then we have twenty-three thousand right. to ask for quotes, and then if that's not enough, then we go back and ask the town to fill, it, you know, to come up with some extra money. Or we do one phase. Or we do one yeah. phase, and well, then if people want to bring it up to town meeting, they can add to what we were able to do. Correct. The the other thing is, uh, we're running out of time for the spring season for planting. Yeah, I think at this point we're probably going to be spring planting in the fall, right? Wow, no, but even then, town meeting is in October, right. which is beyond. Fall. Well, we have 25,000, so if we do... Oh, we wouldn't need town meeting necessarily. No. They could maybe use this, the what we should, emergency we should get, fund. What we should do, and I like the idea, of, let's say we're going to put 2,000 aside, we'll have Merrill do a landscaping plan, and then we'll okay. go out for three bids at 23,000. Okay. At least everybody's got a standard. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and how much can you give us for the two thousand? And then how much can we get done with twenty three thousand? Sounds good. And then beyond that, it's it's we've done as best we can. We've done what we we've done what we said we were going to do. Just put in the bid that we're going to vary the quantities. Yeah, we can we can do a unit on a unit price basis. Yeah. Uh, so do twenty five of one and twenty five of another. And if we have more money, we can extend it. Yeah, just reserve the right to change the right. quality. Right. All right, so do we want to ask know. Matthew to... <coughs> um, Why don't we just get it done? Yeah. Just so theoretically, we can, sorry, but we could just tell Merrill, here's our budget to work with, and they, they should. Well, that's what I was going to say. Do we want to ask um, Matthew to approach Merrill yeah. about getting a... a a very simple landscape plan for two thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, with the two thousand dollar budget, as simple of a landscape plan as we can, and with two goals. One is to buffer the the nearby homeowners, especially at their driveways, right. and to provide some basic screening for the public. We'd like the maximum impact though to be for the abutters yeah. if we could. Yeah, I would. I would just add. Since that's what we that's what we specifically got. <coughs> I would add in. No, we got it for the other two. I brought that up at the time. Okay. I would add in that we have a, a, a budget that is twenty five thousand total. Yep. Yeah. So well, the budget then would be twenty three thousand. Well, I mean the whole budget, including yeah. their the design fee, is twenty five thousand. We're not asking Merrill to, to fit out the. No, but, but <laughs> I'd like I'd like them to 
understand what our limits are. In other words, I don't want them to come back with a $75,000 landscape. Exactly. Plan. You're right. She'll probably do that. That makes sense. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know how landscape architects are. Yep. Oh, yeah. Did Merrill do the initial design for the... No. 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 Merrill no. had nothing to do with it. It's just that there are town engineers, right. so yeah. if they have a landscape architect, then it seems easier mm -hmm. than sending it out to, like, trying to get... doesn't really need a landscape architect. I mean, it just needs to be on paper. Right? Yeah. With yeah, I would yeah. think with construction the construction standards would do that. If worse came to first, you could always call our friend there, Mr. Tomasi. Well, no, because he may want to bid on it. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to get someone yeah, <laughs> neutral. <yeah. coughs> so um, okay, so I, I, I take what you're saying though. So we're going to ask him to focus on the abutters and the driveways, with some basic screening for the public. Note that our overall budget for the landscape portion right now is twenty three thousand, and we would, you know, if we went above that, it would be not much. Hmm. Um, and if they could do that, we. Do we need to formally ask them to do that? Do we need a vote on that? Do you guys want no, to vote on just asking just that? Just think it's something informal. Okay. Either we need to get a minute for the other budget for us. I think I think it's a phone call from Matthew. Yeah, okay. I'll ask him if he can do it for for two thousand. I would think just something basic. because yeah, we only have twenty three thousand. We're not. We can't get that elaborate anyway. Yeah. No. No, no yeah, we're not. Really we're not planning. You know, no. cherry yeah, trees or anything. It doesn't have to be like a full not. engineering drawing. Just <laughs> no. Some, you know, layout, I think. We don't need an Olmstead design. We're not worried about the design. Right, which is why the fall might be a little easier. I don't know. Which is easier, spring or fall, in terms of fall. something surviving? The fall? It's got all yeah. fall yeah. to take. Yeah. Winter to sit there and settle in, and then the whole next spring which to still wet. Which now? So and no dry summer time. Before it hits the next drought. Yeah. Okay. Because those junipers need water, uh, mm -hmm. don't they? Right. The junipers. Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, um, I would think everything would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. if you don't water those, I know I got oh, a couple no. of them. And there's no water. Yeah, they're not getting water, so no. I want to no. take that into account too. You, right. you guys did vote to extend the Dominic's Way deadline. I think I heard that. We did. Yes, we Early did. Yeah. Yes, we did. And um, I think, do we need to sign a new set of drawings from Brigham and Women? You have that on the list. Oh, yeah. In which case, that may be the last thing we really need to do tonight. Um, so we get out early. So this one's a little tricky because there was the full set that they submitted, and then uh, um, we asked them to give the new, just the new title sheets with the waivers on them. Um, so I don't know if you guys want to sign the new title sheet or the full set that was previously submitted, if you see what I mean. I mean, I suppose we could put the new title sheets on the previously submitted sets, but I don't know if that's really appropriate. Yeah. I don't understand what you're saying. So basically when, yeah, I guess it's hard to explain. Uh, when we approved I think when, when you guys voted to approve the site plan, <coughs> um, you know, you voted to approve um, uh, the site plan as of these drawings of this date received, on, you know, received and stamped on such and such a date. Uh, and then one of the conditions of the approval, uh, the decision, one of the conditions was that they would issue us a new title sheet of the drawings with the waivers on the on the title sheet. They need oh. which they needed all the staff. Which they, they did. Think. Yeah, which they did. So I've got those. Um, and so it's just a question of which ones you want to actually sign. We uh, signed the, the final ones, right? Right. I think the whole set should be stamped and dated all the same. So that's what we don't have, I guess. Oh, they only gave us the new front page? Well that's all we asked for, yeah. Well, but that's, that doesn't have a... Uh, I think we asked for revisions to the front page. I think we right. need the full set all stamped and dated on that's the same what you date. That's do. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you don't go to a set of drawings that have different dates. And <laughs> no. So if they gave us a new front page, they should have given us a whole new set of plans. I think that's a, that's a better approach because then there's no ambiguity about right. different yeah. plans. Yeah, different okay. Drawings, so. so that's yeah. what we wanted. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So I will. Um, and so then we were going to ask Matthew to talk with the count, town council about changing if substantial use of the rights authorized is not exercised within two years. That verbiage we wanted to change it to uh, prevent 204 Center Street type situations where the developer um, makes substantial use and then doesn't do anything to complete it for 10 or 20 years and then wants to come back and rely on the plan. And they were supposed to give us some verbiage and they never did. So we're going to ask Matthew to go back and get some verbiage, right? Wasn't there also, and I, you guys might remember this, but remember like maybe about two or three years ago where there was like a state law that came through which basically made the two year thing like null and void? Did it expand it to three years? Or did it no, I think it. it no, it, that was only for a period of time when there was an issue about, um, I know what you're talking about, during the recession. They basically, they basically um, um, extended all the approvals. Extended right, all the yeah. approvals. But that was only for a, not a first step period of time. I think I think that it was for a step. I think it was for a step period of time. Yeah. But this has to do with new approvals we put in place. You know the problem with there with two or four was that we there was occupancy permits granted for all the residential. Other and maybe what we need to do is hold up occupancy permits until we have until the it's site. all done. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. but sometimes, like we have that other site plan over here where we have condos, and there's a front building that never got built over by Pudding Brook. Yeah. Yes. And we Another wanted him to be able. To, we were kind of releasing. He got caught in the recession. Well, that's oh. fine too. If you don't but build that building, you need to come back to us and say, yeah, "What are you doing with the place where the building's going? going? Are you going to put grass he, there? Are yeah. you going to put some stone? Or what are you doing to it? You need to do something to it." Right. You can't just leave it ugly. You can't leave it ugly, and to get your occupancy permit, you need to do something. Yeah. Interim. Well, yeah. and I, well, I hate to, you know, sound like I'm, you know, thinking ill of people, but I have the feeling that on 204, they did just enough to like keep the thing going. And now they've disappeared again. They left all those stumps there. It, it, nothing's happened since they cleared it. Yeah. They seem to have claimed that they're going to get the stumps removed within weeks, right, Matthew? He but we vague. haven't seen he it. He was vague on the timeline, but he said he'll get them removed soon or something like that. He was vague as to how soon. Does it make sense to call uh, a friend in to? On two o four. Yeah, and just give us an update. Yeah, but we don't have time for that on... No, we don't have I mean, I think that, the, I mean, the crucial question, I think, is that we probably want to to change that verbiage so that... But, yeah. but now we're talking about two different things. So we're okay. cross-talking. Right. So the first question is on 204... Tom's bringing up an issue on 204 Center Street and whether we want to ask him to come back in and give us an update since he's being wishy-washy. Yeah, I could in his conversation. Yeah. So maybe we can ask him to come in for a 15-minute session and talk about what's going on there. I think that would be good because yeah. there also has been rumblings of, it looks like he had a for sale sign on it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there was also the question of, I know he was talking about housing. Remember he had... Um, well, that was, that was where he was actually asking us for permission to do and something And then he talked different. about storage units. Yeah, that That's would right, be a yeah. major change to the site plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, I know he's been in a couple of times floating some ideas with us. And um, what we really want him to do is build what he said he was going to build. Okay. Could we do something like say that the foundations need, to, all foundations need to be poured before any occupancy permits are issued? Well, so. That way we wouldn't have the issue with the residents buying, thinking they got <sighs> treed. Oh. A tree but front yard, but and then suddenly it's bylaw. We really don't have to worry. We about don't have the problem anymore. anymore. Well, that's sort of true because ZBA can still do um, a use variance. We don't have a prohibition in our bylaws against a use variance the way some towns do, and so because our bylaws permit use variances, the ZBA could grant a use variance and then we would still be faced with the site plan with these issues. So part of the verbiage here that we had talked to town council about was saying that the two years, the site plan expires after two years. Um, I can't remember how she said it, but it was basically to avoid that issue, we would have verbiage that would say by substantial use, 
once you once there's a break in substantial use, then you have to come back for a new site plan. Would be the effect of it. That if they build, they make substantial use, they build some piece of it, and then they stop. Well, it's defining what substantial use is. Yeah. It's well, it's more the break in usage that would require right. them to. Okay, you you didn't build out the whole site plan. So if you want to now build out the whole site plan ten years later rules and standards right, right. may have all no, changed, yeah. no, drain well, water may have all changed. The site plan isn't, isn't, isn't they haven't finished until they've finished everything that's on the site right, plan. Exactly. Yeah, but what we were told by council is that once they make substantial use of the site plan, that site plan sort of remains in effect and it becomes hard to cut it off. Forever, basically. Well, okay, but unless, yeah. unless, <laughs> it becomes unless, hard to cut it off. Unless yeah. the site plan, unless the work on the site is 100% complete, the work will expire at the end of two years. So there's, 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 there are, the council, our council was supposed to give us verbiage on that. So yeah. I so would like to ask Matthew to It's back to, to saying that all site work needs to be complete before occupancy permits are issued. Right. And on 204, that would have meant the all the driveways, the you know, all the that. The driveways, the grass, and the, and yeah. the and they so you might have two pads, but that have sidewalks around right. them. But that's still not complete. No, I, I, it's not well, complete. I mean, I, th I kind of feel like they go that far. But you don't want those to sit there for 20 years and no, still be able no. to come back and finish them whenever they want. I agree. Mm -hmm. Now, I, mean, I guess the, my biggest problem with 204 was that a lot of people, all the residents bought thinking that the front yard is going to have trees in it. And so I know it's buyer right. beware, but... But also I really feel like we have a duty to like let people know what they're buying. I think well, <laughs> but they should have looked at the site plan themselves. Yeah, I, think I know fine. it's buyer beware, but still, but, people don't. But also, I mean, I think there's also a crucial, similar issue with, um, you know, for somebody gets permission for something, say, 15 years ago, you know, environmental regulations may have changed, the conditions for the butters may have changed. It just doesn't make sense for them to still be able to, to go back to what they got permission for, you know, 12 years ago and say we still we're still allowed to do it the way we did it, even though they actually, they allowed the deadline to expire. I mean, you know, they didn't even, they didn't even get extensions of the deadline for completion, and yet still they're able to come back and then say we want to finish the project. Because they had made substantial use. Yeah, so that just seems so problematic for, for multiple reasons. Well, we also can we get rid of this substantial but, use? But they so also say in you've a got situation where the only other alternative for them was to do nothing and leave it, and they had a asset value the land that they couldn't yeah. do anything with. Right. So, so I'm hearing three different things. One is on 204 Center Street, we want them to come in and talk to us about what's going on. Yeah. Then with regard to the substantial use on the language that we're putting into our conditions, what other language can town council give us? And we'd like to get that language yeah. to say what other language town council can give us so that we have some control over how long that site plan extends. The substantial use is meant to get to that person who has basically substantially completed it but can't finish it or has, like a Pudding Brick has done some of the condos for those units but hasn't done all of them and we're letting them keep working on it. And then the third thing is to what extent do we want to look at our site plan regulations and look at the require the timeline for what has to be done prior to an occupancy permit for one of the buildings on the site. Yeah, that's the only control. When there's multiple occupancy buildings. Right. Right. Yeah, and maybe we ask for a routing slip on occupancy. And I I do think we want to talk about a routing slip on occupancy permits. Right. Because we we seem that's where we seem to not get our as built to not get right. that final review to say that our yep. conditions were complied with. Right. So we go through all these efforts to sort of be real rule bound, and then all of a sudden, we don't have any control because the occupancy permit is granted, and we don't. Um, no. So where do we go for that? I think on that one. I guess either talk to Ed or George. I don't know. Well, the Department of Municipal Inspections, right? Right. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I should send an email to Ed. Yeah. Um, because I will put some teeth in the enforcement. And you know, I, I know that Ed has asked me a few times about the whole 204 Center Street issue. 
So my impression is that is, um, you know, maybe he's heard complaints from citizens or whatever. My impression, I could be wrong, but my, my sense is that he is somewhat concerned about sort of that whole, what happened with that whole situation of trees getting torn down. So I think he'd probably be sympathetic to the issue as far as the verbiage of the way and, and some of those related issues with, with occupants and voters as well. Okay. Um, then if the board tells me to, I will seek the um, routing slip for occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, I'll reach out to Ed on that. Um, Matthew is going to reach out to town council what verbiage we can put into our conditions to make that a little tighter. The question of our site plan uh, regulations is a tougher one, and whether anyone has any time to sort of whether we create a subcommittee or whether a couple of people try to go through the site plan and uh, rules and regs and look for these kind of issues and see if there's a bunch of things that we could try to clean Can up. Can you add something to um, the whole occupancy permit thing? That yeah. it's all occupancy permits, not just site plan? Because the reason for that is I've seen a few subdivisions where they comply with the LCN requirement, basically the ratio of pavement to grass to size of the house and all right, that right. and the final result is not what they originally applied for right. really yeah uh, okay excuse me Jim do you know what the LCN is uh, Dan mm -hmm. uh, would you explain that please basically it's a lot characterization number okay yeah. it's based on the same as like uh, TR 55 for runoff calculations okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it basically gives you a ratio of how much pavement you can have right, and roof yeah. okay. versus grass versus trees yeah. Like naturally occurring trees. Yeah, I think our minimum. It was to stop developers coming in and clear cutting the entire. Right. Forget what, what we don't get we had. It was off of Elm Street yeah. or Dwelly Street or something like that. And they, they, they basically it looked like a surface of the moon. Bill they Bill they chopped there. There wasn't a weed that was made of grass anywhere. Yeah. And they Milford. Milford Estates. Yeah, right. that's what it was. Yeah. Sure. That happened. Yeah. No, because that was <coughs> a big open field to begin with. It was oh, it was yeah. okay. <coughs> it looked like that before. Yeah, it was a huge open field. It was they had dairy cows in there. Okay. All right. With that said, um, I think, um, and we had talked about the letter going out to about more specifically Oak Street. Um, I was going to um, pare down the letter that we're sending, but I think I already have authorization from you guys to send a letter to. Yeah. George Ferry to let him know that we want that to, um, we, we want to make sure that we get a chance to look at that before occupancy yeah. permits, because there are phases that there's, there are elements that <coughs> wouldn't be apparent to the building inspectors that are on the plan that we right. need to check. Um, anything else anybody wants to bring up before we have a motion to adjourn early? My God. I motion to adjourn. I'm going to bed early Second. tonight. Slid in with a quick second there. <laughs> um, okay. Are we adjourned? We're adjourned. So I'm.